Hello, good evening. Uh, this is going to be a, a short hello and a report on my uh, operation. The operation went well. I have some pain, uh, not terrible pain. Of course, I also have medication inside of me that uh, would, would mask it. And uh, if I were to give you the weather report, it would be it's in the 50s and I'm disturbing the animals at our place by <laughs> doing this. So this is more like a, uh, uh, a short walk and talk with a, sh with a short stand and talk. So this, is, this portion is the short stand. Um, I can't help but notice that the argument has become using the killing of babies as a basis to drive people crazy to go to war. I, I don't know another alternative. I understand the grief and uh, I know how I would feel if something happened to a family member, all of us do. But the question is, what is the proportional response? And the powerful language we're using well, I'm sorry to say is one-sided because we anticipate, and, and I put this at Netanyahu's doorstep, um, he shares the view of Hamas in which, though he doesn't say it, he would destroy everything. Our side, that is those of us who support Israel, we are concerned about what Netanyahu would do and whether that would promote the entry of other nation states. Now we've seen Hezbollah out of Lebanon make a couple of gestures into the battle. And the question now is, is peace or proportion irretrievable? And the answer is no. It is my hope that the Americans, that is our ambassador, and our president are having conversations with, well, Netanyahu and his advisors. And my hope is that they're saying, it's one thing to secure the place, but it's another to cut off food and electricity and to line up the troops on the borders and to basically suggest we're coming and we think annihilation is a proper response to someone hurting babies. There's a little bit of double talk here because in America, we give lip service to caring about our children, but what do we do? We don't prosecute the killers. We don't do anything about it. So that's the other extreme. Netanyahu has to do something. America should have done something long ago because it's not a new problem. And we've had the periods of time to deliberate about it and to act upon it, but we don't do that. So what is the message Netanyahu has to send? Well, he has to show strength, but I don't think he can rightly show devastation and hurt comparable to the other side, not just because it's just, but because there has to be a way, a third way that allows the parties to come together. And this is not just between Hamas and the Israelis, it's the entire region. And if the entire region gets it in its head that what they have to do is to be as violent and as outrageous and commit war crimes as Hamas has, well, then the situation is lost, and it may already be. And we, we see the mirror image in our own country, and I've mentioned this before, but every day it takes on a complexion that confirms and is inescapable that the Republicans are not interested in governing. They're interested in destruction. And they spent so much time challenging and arguing against the regular order 
that when I have the chance to actually govern with a speaker, they can't do it. And there are important issues on the table, not just the war, two wars really, uh, and not just even keeping the government open. And it's not just children, <clears throat> it is a conscious, amoral act to destroy our democracy, such as it is, not only at the Capitol with these no-neck, hateful representatives, but also in the states where they're trying to change the rules to make voting more difficult, to compromise at every, every level of government the ability to govern as a democracy, to be a republic. So how is this going to turn out? I don't know. It's a suspense drama that unfolds every day. And in recent days, it unfolds poorly. And in regular times, I would assume that what, what we're doing is trying to convince the nation this is not the way to govern. And it's amazing to me, and I don't think, it, well, there probably have been a couple of times in my lifetime, there have been comparable moves to compromise America. I have a, where is he? Right there. Our barn cat. Out to help me deliver my message and to make sure I don't fall down because of uh, my operation. So, uh, the one thing they told me, talking about uh, what I'm doing now. Uh, this is this is part of the, the plan of recovery. And I have noticed that the small walks I've taken already uh, help uh, with both the pain that I feel in my lower stomach um, and the ability to move. So I will take small walks and then longer walks than I can. Uh, apparently my brain with all the stuff, <laughs> the chemicals in it, still works. Uh, some might argue about that, but I don't think it has to do with uh, my procedure. And it was kind of fun to have Holly be my caretaker, having been her caretaker. And uh, the doctor that I had is quite a genius. And uh, we had some good talks about what he was doing, and what the risks were, and so forth. So... Uh, for now, you know, subjects are further review by the doctor. I'm on the road to recovery. And I want to thank all of you who spent the time to wish Holly and I well as we go through uh, the kind of thing we all do from time to time that surprises us. How does one get a hernia? I don't know. Lifting a 50-pound bag of feet and twisting yourself and throwing it or a bale. I don't know. <clears throat> Lifting too much weight when... Maybe you couldn't even lift it as a kid. <laughs> so, um, I don't, I may not be on the trail, uh, the one, the usual one. I may take one, something like I did today. This one was improvised. Um, I don't usually walk here. But I chose this uh, field of recovery, if you will, because the instructions I got encouraged me to try to walk over flat terrain, certainly for two weeks. Walking is good, listening to your body is good, and for those of you out there thinking of having this operation, um, consider it carefully with your doctor. Somebody wrote to me and said that they had some pain after the operation, and I felt terrible about that, <laughs> and I wondered if I might have that result, and apparently I don't so far, and I may not. And there are two procedures. One is to use da Vinci, which is uh, a laser that basically someone soars through you with the necessary material, but only goes into a small space. Now, the old way was to make cuts and to go in. And there was a lot of pain connected to that. Um, after, I say a lot of pain. There was some pain allocated to that after the operation. 
So, uh, if one thinks they have to do this operation, do some research and look for doctors that do this by way of Da Vinci. So, uh, that's what I have to say. I don't dare spin without fearing that I might fall down. So, uh, if I can, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. All the best. Bye-bye.